If the elastate is flammable, the experiment should be performed in a fume hood or in a well ventilated area. Today, we will be measuring the length of a molecule with quantum mechanics. More specifically, we will be measuring the length of trans beta carotene. For this experiment, we will be using 1 carot, 10 ml of ethyl acetate, and some anhydrous magnesium sulfate. First, we will isolate the trans beta carotene out from the carrot. To do so, a previously boiled carrot is cut in small pieces and placed into a mortar. Then, 10 ml of ethyl acetate are added to the carrot. The system is then triturated with the pestle until obtaining a homogeneous slurry. Transbetacarotene is a highly non-polarized species which in principle should dissolve pretty well in ethyl acetate. By making a slurry, we increase the total contact surface area with the solvent, ethyl acetate, and therefore we increase the overall efficiency of the extraction process. The resultant slurry is then filtered, obtaining a nice orange color solution. At this point, we have obtained a crude solution of trans beta carotene. However, the solution is still wet, and therefore, some anhydrous magnesium sulfate must be added to remove the majority of the water. The solution is then filtered and collected in a clean vial. And finally, we should have obtained a relatively diluted solution of transbetacarotene. Actually, what we have is a solution containing different carotenoids. However, transbetacarotene is likely to be the major component. Now, we will measure the UV visible absorption spectrum of this solution. First, the spectrum of the pure solvent ethyl acetate is taken. Then, a few drops of our transbetacarotene solution are added to our blank solution. In this case, it is important to use a relatively diluted solution in order to get a well-defined spectrum. By the way, I am taking the UV visible absorption spectrum with our DIY high-resolution spectrometer that I've made in a previous video. The absorption spectrum of the transbetacarotene solution is then taken. After subtracting the data corresponding to the solution and that of the solvent, this is the net absorption spectrum obtained for our trans beta carotene. The compound has an absorption maximum centered at 454 nanometers. Alright, now we will try to derive a quantum mechanical treatment of the problem to be solved, which is actually to measure the length of our molecule. And we will try to derive uh, an equation which relates uh, the length of our molecule with the absorption spectrum by means of quantum mechanics. Alright, first of all, let's have a look at the chemical structure. As we can see, actually transbetacarotene is a relatively simple molecule, which in principle could be defined as a highly conjugated system composed by a total of 22 pi electrons. Due to this effect, extended conjugation, the system is actually further stabilized by what is known as a resonance energy. Therefore, we could model the problem to be solved as a general particle in a, enclosed in a one-dimensional potential box. Let's assume that we have a unidimensional potential box of a given length L. Now we will assume that the potential anywhere outside the box is infinite, whereas on the other hand, inside the box, we have a constant potential. Additionally, we will establish two conditions. The first one is the so-called normalization condition. 
This condition is actually pretty simple. And it states that essentially if there is a particle in the box, the probability of finding the particle inside the box has to be 1. That is, the particle is actually in the box. By the way, in our case, the particle is actually the electron. And the other condition is the so-called boundary condition, which basically means that the wave function at x equals 0 or x equals, equals L has to be 0. By the way, the wave function is just what contains all the information about our system. For this problem, we could give a general sinusoidal wave function. And now we can express the probability density as the product of the wave function and its complex conjugate. Now we can make use of their normalization condition in combination with the probability density function to get the value of A. On the other hand, now we can make use of the so-called boundary condition to get the value of A. And now we finally have the real expression of our wave function. The last thing to do is to solve the well-known Schrodinger equation. Considering that the potential inside the box is actually constant, we can neglect it. And therefore we can express our Hamiltonian just by means of the kinetic energy operator. And now we just solve the Schrodinger equation for this very simple approximation. And finally, we have obtained a general expression for the energy of the different energy levels within our particle in a one-dimensional box. Alright, now we can assume that the tran electronic transition within the trans beta carotene takes place between the HOMO and the LUMO, which are consecutive levels. And therefore, we can get an expression for their energies as a function of the general equation that we have previously obtained. Now we can obtain a general formula for the energy difference between these two frontier orbitals. And now we have to remember that a photon will only be absorbed or emitted by a given system if its energy is exactly equal to the difference on the energy between the levels involved within the, in this case, electronic transition. Finally, making use of both expressions, we can get a general formula for the length of our one-dimensional box. And now we are finally able to measure the length of our molecule. Using the experimental data obtained before, which showed a maximum absorption band centered at 454 nanometers, and the previously obtained formula, we can get the length of the conjugated system. Finally, using the experimental data in combination with the previously derived equation, we got a total length of around 18 Armstrongs. This value is relatively close to the actual value, which is somewhere around 20 Armstrongs. Obviously, our result is not perfect, but considering that the experimental data have been taken with uh, DIY equipment, and that the quantum mechanical treatment of the problem to be solved was uh, pretty much a very simple approximation, this result is actually pretty good. In reality, the absorption spectrum of a molecule is actually much more complex than just considering the energy of the HOMO and the LUMO, which uh, are not necessarily involved within this process. Additionally, a huge amount of different factors such as the solvent, the presence of other molecules within the solution, 
or the vibrational relaxation of the molecules will also affect the absorption spectrum and therefore our quantum mechanical treatment of the of this problem is actually a very very rough approximation but as you can see it kind of worked and for me isolating a compound from a natural source and measuring its length at home it's actually a very cool project thanks for watching